please and when you can. Thanks. Okay. Hi, it's Cullen here from Melbourne Silicon Beach Radio and we're at our Silicon Beach drink tonight. I'm about to introduce you to somebody who's going to be on stage shortly. I'm just going to give you a brief preview. We are an absolutely packed house tonight and we are well over capacity here at the Royal Melbourne Hotel. We've got some amazing 360 video as well that's going to be streamed shortly. And so I'm just going to introduce you and I'm here in actual fact with James. Is that hey, right, James? It is indeed, yes. Okay, James, now we understand that um, you're going to be pitching tonight, which we'll hear very shortly. I Do you agree. want to just uh, tell us a little bit about your history? Uh, what have you done before you arrived here tonight? Yeah. Uh, I'm a, I would call myself a covering, recovering corporate entrepreneur. Yes. So I have a, um, a long history as a management consultant, yep. um, 15 years or so in emerging technology and innovation. Right. Um, and about nine months ago, I decided to make a leap to start my own business. Okay, and, um, and here I am. Okay, fantastic. And so this is, uh, you've been to Silicon Beach before, is that right? Yes. Yeah, that's right. And so as we as we move ahead in time, I guess you're going to be giving us your 90 second pitch. Is there anything that you've got time to tell us about now that you won't have time to tell us once we get up oh, there? Wow. That's a little bit of nitty gritty. That's an awesome question. Um, nitty gritty detail. You will hear me talk a little bit, I'm sure, about the Founders Institute, but what I will say is if you want to understand more, we've got a session next Thursday. Please come along if you want to understand more about how to turn your idea into a business. Um, then we would love to see you next week um, at the Melbourne Bitcoin Technology Centre. Please come along. All right, brilliant. Thank you very much for your time. All right, thanks a lot. Okay, so here we go. We're just going to go around. We're going to say hi to a few other people. I just want to know if we can introduce you to the team and if you can tell us a little bit about your amazing uh, camera. We can't really see it in the light. Do well, we'll get it there. We'll come through in a second here. Do you want to just introduce yourself and tell us what's happening? Okay, I'm John Workington. I'm the technology evangelist at Michael's Cameras. Uh, which is just down the road here on uh, Lonsdale and Elizabeth Street in Melbourne. And I've brought along the Ricoh Theta panoramic camera. We've just shot a panorama to the phone here. And the camera is sitting up on top of this pole right beside me. Right, so I don't know if we're going to be able to see that with the light. We're just going to go this way. Do you want to just try and uh, help, help me? I'll just bring it down. Bring it down. So, so that's the camera. Tell us a little bit about, on us. about I think he's spying on us. He is spying on us, so tell yes. us a little bit this about is this spy camera, camera. And so, how it works. So this camera's got a fisheye lens on the left and the right side of it, okay. and a small cell phone style camera in it. So there's two complete cameras, two complete fisheye lenses, and each one of these lenses can see just a little bit behind itself. So when the camera's triggered from the cell phone, which we go over to here, so there's a live view coming through right here. Okay. And I'll, I'll, I'll aim it over to myself. So. There's me in the live view. I'm kind of washed out here. But when the, when the, when the cell phone uh, triggers the camera, both sensors take the picture at the same time, and then the camera stitches the picture together and then transfers it back to the cell phone where you can instantly share it on Facebook in 360 degrees. Oh, And you can uh, share the pictures around and they're just directly uh, ready to roll with social media. And right. they're quite engaging. Brilliant. And so for any of our, uh, our people that are watching and listening in, where are they going to be able to find this footage afterwards, the footage from tonight? Most likely, I'm going to uh, share the files with Ian Hopkinson, who's standing right behind me here with Mad Science, Mad Scientist Digital, and he's going to do some posting live. So I'm going to take this picture I just shot, and I'm going to... Uh, Wi-Fi it over to his cell phone, and he's going to post it on his Facebook feed. Oh, yeah, okay. I okay. put it on Twitter. Brilliant. You can put it on Meetup so, as well. Yeah. So in about five minutes, come back and see me, okay. and it'll be on the Facebook feed. You this is exciting. On the feed for the okay. event. Okay, wonderful. Atula, I'm just going to introduce a couple of other podcasters, yeah. and then you're going to be leading us in a few minutes' time. Yeah, yeah. okay. Brilliant. Thanks a lot. Yeah, no worries. Thanks. Okay, thanks. Hi, Ray. Hello. Hi. Colin here from Silicon Beach Radio. We're just doing a live feed. Yeah. Uh, are we live streaming everything tonight? Yes. yes. Awesome. Sure. Sure. So I'm the uh, CEO and co-founder of Collective Campus and Lemonade Stand. Um, Lemonade Stand is a kids' business building program. 
uh, which has been run across the country and recently um, I was a recipient of $100,000 from Launch Week, so really excited to scale that program. Um, and Collective Campus, uh, we're all about helping corporates unlock innovation, and we've just announced uh, the Mills Oakley Accelerator, which is a three-month uh, incubator we'll be running uh, with the law firm, the PTO law firm, and the first uh, legal tech accelerator in Asia Pac. So really excited to do that. Check that out at millsoakleyaccelerator.com. Tell us, you've got, a, you've got a few new things coming up at your show. Do you want to give us the URL for your show? Yeah, sure. So, Ray Miladoni from the Razor Sharp Show. Uh, I'm the host. Razor Ray is my name. Uh, it's RazorSharpShow.com, and you can listen to all the episodes there. We interview entrepreneurs from all around the world, getting some big names on the show now. JLD, Dave, Dale Beaumont, and many more to come in the near future. All right, brilliant. Thank you very much. Thanks, guys. Have a good night. Thank you. Cheers. Okay, Max, yeah, we're, about, hey, we're about to get up on stage. We're going to be leaving a taller in the next two minutes. So, yeah. any thoughts of the day before you start out? Um, thoughts of the day is probably all around lean startup because I've been in a TW workshop with Ash Muria um, doing lean startup, lean canvas, um, talking all about innovation and so forth. And we've had people from all over Melbourne from the startup community right through to big enterprises and consulting companies um, and it's really great to see all these great things happening for startups in Melbourne. All right, brilliant. Thanks, Max. So you're going to take it away, is that right? Yeah, I'll go through and steer the boat clear of all the uh, hazards along the way, I believe. <laughs> all right, yeah. thank you very much. All right, thanks a lot. Here we go. Atul is going to take us in now, and he's giving the big shh, and uh, here we go. We're about to start. Get ready. Thanks. Just one, two, three. Can you hear us? No! Louder! Testing one, two, three. Can all of you all in the romantic area, could you please come forward? Enough romance now. Have a good... Okay. Thanks for that. Sorry about the lights not being on in the middle area. They have decided to make it romantic for us tonight because welcome to Melbourne Silicon Beach and Founders Institute first ever joint pitch night. My name is Atula and this is Matt helping me. And uh, yeah, it's going to be a special night and more crowded than usual because of uh, the Founders Institute people. So a big welcome to Founders Institute and if I know that a lot of people, a lot of you are coming here for the first time. Just a brief introduction of Silicon Beach. We have been going for about five years in Melbourne and we are now 6,563 6, members. So those of you from Founders Institute and even prior to sign up who are not members, please after tonight sign up so that we can bump it up. We, we asked for some funding from the Victorian government. They didn't give it to us, so <laughs> let's hit 7,000 when they come for the next uh, funding round. So we are planning to open a lot of Silicon beaches around Victoria because Victorian government didn't give us money. I'm going to Tasmania next week and we are opening a, we are opening a Silicon beach in Launceston next week. Yep. So that's all from me. I'll give you to Max. Yeah, and, um, yeah, I was lucky enough to meet someone today that's uh, from an innovation hub that's starting up in Coffs Harbour as well, so we might even be getting up to Coffs Harbour. Um, and uh, that was one of our problems in the, in the uh, submission, I think, was that we were saying we want to start invigorating the silicon beaches around Australia and building a whole great big community. And, yeah, they wanted, yeah they, they wanted to keep it all local. We're trying to get it out and get the sharing and the collaboration with everybody, and, and they're going, no, 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 that's outside Victoria, you can't do that. Yeah. Oh well, such is life, such is life. A um, little bit of housekeeping uh, for, it, for anyone who's new here. The toilets are over to your rear left, over there. Bars down at the back and thank you very much to the Royal Melbourne Hotel for being our venue sponsor. They've got the $20 steak night on again tonight. Yep, $20 steak and, and drinks from our sponsor. And um, like we were saying, um, Yeah, they don't sponsor us. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you, mate. Thank you yeah, very you much. Better acknowledge the, yeah, I don't, I don't know that speech. Yeah, yeah, I don't know either. Next time I'll, I'll do it. Okay. Um. Uh. 
So the recent events and so forth that have been happening around Melbourne, we've got the Digital Innovation Festival that's being run by the Victorian Government at the moment. So if you look at the Victorian, uh, look up Digital Innovation Festival, there's a whole heap of events that are happening um, this week and next week around di digital innovation. So get along to those, there's a heap of stuff around social innovation, tech startups, heap of award nights and stuff like that as well. Um, and part of that was we had Ash Maria. Anyone know Ash Maria from Lean Canvas? Lean Startup? Yes. 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 Okay, yeah. He's been here for the last two days running a workshop as well. So that's been really great to have these well thought leaders around startup and so forth actually in Melbourne and sharing their knowledge and being part of the system. Um, on to the rest of the night. Um, we do have some sponsors, even though it's not the Victorian government. But our other sponsors are TCF. Um, would you like to come up? Do you want to pitch? Trick pitch? Sponsors. Good evening. Sorry, you're a little bit short than that. I am. Good evening. Um, my name is Michael Valentine. I'm the general manager of TCF Services here in here in Melbourne. Um, I'm sort of the startup office of a city boutique consultancy that offers R and D tax incentive services. I'm not going to talk to you about tax for very long. But... It's so interesting. It's a really interesting, there's two reasons. It's because it's so interesting and it's also because my parking is going to expire in about two minutes and I'm going to get a ticket. But I will be around later if anybody is interested. Um, I would just encourage you to find out, if you're not aware, um, companies that are doing R&D in Australia, who are startups, who might be pre-revenue, could get up to 45 cents in the dollar back from the government which is obviously a really important benefit to be aware of. Um, TCF Services, uh, let's try and get our website up there. It's a sponsor's link there. I will just, uh, yeah, just direct you towards a bit of additional information about that. So if anybody is potentially interested in looking at doing an R&D claim for their business, um, certainly that's something very happy to come and have a, have a no obligation coffee about if anybody's interested in that. I'll just get uh, on the resources page there. There's actually quite a lot of free uh, information in the College of Knowledge at our website there, which you know, you're know you free to download and have a look at. There's a lot of really useful information. Um, in particular, the Plain English Guide to the R&D Tax Incentive is a really useful guide that our MD, uh, Jared Frickman's put together specifically um, dealing with issues for the startup community. So uh, thanks very much. Uh, have a great night and Thanks. see you next. Yeah. You Thank talk, you very much. Can you claim it as a tax deduction? Oh, I don't think so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And my, one of the great things to come out of that is who best to invest in startups than the government? Apart from us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, along tonight, along tonight we have the Founders Institute. Um, James, do you want to come up and tell us all about what you do? Yes. Good evening, everybody. Um, I am James. I'm here with my colleague Ian. Um, collectively, the two of us run the Founders Institute in Melbourne. The Founders Institute, for those of you that don't know, um, is a Silicon Valley based um, idea accelerator. Um, we've got a program that we're starting off later this month. Um, essentially, the program brings together a, um, a cohort of mentors, some curriculum. Um, that allows aspiring founders to create a business in 14 weeks. If you guys would like to know a little bit more about that, we've got an information session that we're running next Thursday James at the Melbourne... It's Melbourne here? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yes, line. you're you're tagged on Silicon Valley. Yeah, bottom line yeah. Yeah. Oh. If you want to know a little bit more, please feel free to jump onto the website. Um, please join us next week. We're at the Melbourne Bitcoin Technology Centre where we're running um, an information evening. You can understand a little bit more about the mentors that we bring along to the program. You can understand more about the curriculum and what we do, some of the past graduates of the program. So it's been running for four years or so now um, in Melbourne. Um, we have brought along with us this evening a couple of mentors from the program. Um, we've got Carol here from Salesforce. Sat, uh, um, Mel, who, who doesn't need any introduction, I suspect, the old GM for Inspire9 and Social Entrepreneur. And we've also got Taylor, who recently wrote um, the book Innovation Melbourne. 
somewhere we brought along Steve as well, um, who is here. So um, as you're pitching, if you guys want any advice from um, some of these startup mentors, then please feel free to ask them some questions. Um, I know the guys that came along from the Founders Institute, some of you submitted questions prior to coming along tonight. So maybe when you come up, if you just want to introduce yourself as um, I'm here from the Founders Institute, I submitted a question, um, and then please feel free to, to um, I guess, ask one of the mentors that question after you've finished. You want to can point out the mentors, if the mentors can put their hands up. So there's three there, and there's one hundred points. The other thing that I would like to share, um, we have um, offered a scholarship um, or a fellowship to anybody that is here this evening, so uh, a, a Silicon Beach fellowship. So if some of you are interested in applying for the course and want to be a part of the course, um, if you've been here this evening um, and you register some details, Ian? Hit me up. Hit Ian up, um, then uh, you can apply for a fellowship into the program. Easy. So no payment needed. No payment needed. So there was some feedback around only, that. Only your soul. Which, yeah, only your soul. But um, <laughs> there was some feedback around that one. So just to clarify that one, yeah. I don't understand the reason for the change in rules. So there was, uh, Thula and I had a conversation about a fellowship um, a couple of weeks ago, um, and it was publicised and there was a requirement to pay up front. Um, that's changed, that requirement is no longer Good. there. I asked the back office team why that was, and I got a very long email, um, for which I couldn't understand, so I still don't understand why if anybody asks me, um, but you don't have to pay money up front now, you can apply. You will have to submit um, an application, you will have to go through the psychometric test, so one of the things that we do in the Founders is we run a profiling piece that says um, what's the likeliness of being successful and all of those sorts of things. So if you submit an application, you pass the test, then um, yes, there is a place on the course. Yeah. It's not a difficult yeah. test. I did it two years ago when it was launched, and I yeah, passed. Yeah. Yeah. So it must have been easy. Yeah, must have. Yeah. <laughs> they must have changed it since, because I, I, I thought it was hard. <laughs> <laughs> very yeah, yeah, that's right, that's right. Stick with this man. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Okay, so, yeah, thank you very much, and we really appreciate the Founders Institute coming in. It's the first time we've had a uh, joint event together, so that's been really great. Okay, we'll jump on the now, process. yeah, and the slight difference is tonight, if you've been along to the Silicon Beach pitch and drinks beforehand, what we've done is we've sort of gone from doing a pitch, you've got 90 seconds, I'll be timing it, and I'll turn off the mic when you get to 90 seconds and give a little tap when there's 30 seconds left. Okay, so we're being strict on the times. But the big bonus about having the mentors from the Founders Institute a lot tonight is that they're going to give you a 90 second feedback on your pitch afterwards. So you'll be able to get uh, people who are actually really experienced and know their stuff giving you some instant feedback. Don't stress, they're not gonna cut you down or do anything it's, awful. It's not Shark Tank. No, it's not Shark Tank at all, but what it is is just constructive, or you know, not constructive criticism, but it's constructive feedback on your pitch and what you've been doing. And um, I think that's a really great big added benefit and bonus that uh, you know, we're able to utilise here tonight. So thanks a lot, guys. Really appreciate it. We started this day, Frank. Yeah. Bruno? Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah, so... Um, Bruno, you were along at the Ashmuria um, podcast last night with Steve. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Where should I stand? Thank you very much. Uh, can you put the one with the big question mark? That is more dramatic. More dramatic? Okay. Yeah, I like dramatic. This, this, oh, beautiful. I love this one. Thank you. So, when are you ready? Yeah. Yes, ready? go. Okay, thank you. Good evening, my name is Bruno Peschatz. I'm a Croatian living in Norway who came to Australia to ask you one question. It's, it's a very simple question, it is yes or no question. Feel free to whisper your answer, shout your answer, whatever your preferred method of communication is. So here is the question. Would you like to increase the success rate of your startup or business venture by playing a game? 
Thank you, thank you, thank you. Not any game, it's a board game. It lets you crush your competition, see them driven before you, and hear the lamentation of their spouses. It's beautiful. <laughs> Can you... Yeah, and it already exists. So that's also a bonus. Hit one more. Thank you very much. It's been kickstarted, 10 hours, 500%. Hit one more. This is my contact, I'll be around. Thank you very much. Yeah, that, that was less than a minute, you did really well. It was great. Thank you. Yeah. Now, do you actually want feedback or not? You just want to go away. No. Thank you. Feedback is always welcome. That's also part of uh, lean. Yeah. Hey, do we want some lean feedback? I accept pet feedback as well. Yeah. <laughs> feedback? Yeah. Some feedback from Bruno. That was awesome. But I would prefer a website address where I could just buy the board game instead of email. Ah. You're correct. Slide it back. <laughs> Playlean.com. Yeah, it's a playlean.com. It's a board game that takes you through all the uh, lean startups. So it's awesome. 150 euros. Yeah, that's cheap for a success. I mean, when you bank in one million euros, that's like it's like 150 clicks on AdWords. Yeah, that, 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 that's how they uh, wanted to send him over here to play games. Uh, yeah. I created myself. <laughs> Sorry, I'm choking. <laughs> Okay, next one is, uh, who is this? I said Ulti Dash. You had to be looking for someone, but it doesn't matter here. Yeah. Uh, whatever you guys have. Should I start? Feel the pressure at the time. Um, hi everyone, uh, my name is Matteo and I'm the creator of Altidash. Yeah, I'm the creator of Altidash. Um, Altidash is a productivity Chrome extension. So it's an app that works on your browser. And what it does, it um, helps you be more productive and optimize your work habits and your time when you're sitting in front of your laptop. Uh, the way it does it, um, it um, for instance, it blocks uh, time-wasting websites. So it doesn't let you go on Facebook or whatever, whatever other website you get lost in. Um, it tracks your working habits, so it tells you at the end of the day where you've been and for how long. And this is it, pretty much. And much more, much more, of course, much more. <laughs> we, we launched it last week and we had a pretty good feedback. We were, the day after we launched it, we were featured into the 100 best apps on the store by PC Magazine. So we're pretty proud of that and uh, things are going very well, the feedback is really good. So we, are, we want to take it to the next level and we're looking for someone uh, that knows how to write uh, white words on a black screen. And I don't know how to do that, so yeah, if that sparks any interest and if you like productivity things, uh, feel free to talk to me. Thank you. Thank you. for you. Uh, do you have young kids? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And uh, do you let your young kids to watch YouTube? Yeah. Okay. And are you concerned that they would watch something that they should not watch on YouTube? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So my idea is to classify videos on YouTube based on age range and then kids would be restricted to watch videos only that they are allowed to and if I may yeah. can we click on prototype prototype please so it's going to be iPad app so kids would watch it on the tablet and they would only see videos that they are allowed to watch so hopefully to load The magic pause. So do you click on this thing here? Do you click open? Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. I don't have the English in the app, so it might not work. No, okay, fine. technical difficulties. Yeah. But it's going to be a mobile app that restricts kids from watching uh, inappropriate content. And it will be a separate website for parents where they can set up the rules and also set up rules for time so that the kids don't watch too much don't spend too much time watching videos 
You are from Founders Institute? Yeah? You're definitely due for some feedback. Yeah? yeah? Okay, who's coming up? You can't be stage shy. Sure. <laughs> Thanks for your presentation. Really interesting idea. What I would have loved to hear in the pitch would have been how you're planning to reach the video. So um, is it some sort of, you know, artificial intelligence or some sort of algorithm, those sorts of things? Because, and how you're gonna kind of keep up with the rate that new video is being added to the platform. Um, and then also in, in terms of, another thing that I think would be interesting is uh, thinking about your users or the parents in regards to as a community, what some of their other concerns may be and how you might connect them together to help share that to, to build out, I suppose, your offering a bit further. That's my feedback. Thank you very much. Anyone else? Anyone else? Kayla? Um, I guess the um, thought that I had in mind was you know, how you're going to make money, which is um, similar to one of the other Thing really, so uh, I guess my main feedback, uh, I guess for most of the pitches, is how are you going to make money? Uh, do I answer this question? Yeah. Oh, yeah, so my idea is I would simply make it a paid service, and parents would pay um, monthly fee for using this service. Mm -hmm. That's my idea. Great, cool. Steve, do you have a General feedback for anyone looking to start a startup. Um, how are people currently solving the problem is a question you want to answer. A quick Google search of YouTube parental controls came up with YouTube's got a built-in function plus lots of other apps doing this type of thing. So how are you different? What's compelling about your product that's going to make you stand out? Like you need to be 10x better than everything else out there. Fantastic. Thank you. Cool. Okay, great. Thank you very much. We build it. Yeah, Peter is an old friend from Hub Melbourne. Hi. Hi, well, uh, I've got one question. Thanks. I've got Hi. a question for you, Bruno. Yes, Would you like to be able to change climate change? Yeah, it's a tech talk. Is it? Yes. <laughs> Would you like to be able to change climate change? Would you like that choice to be yours? Yes. Rebuild yes. it's about rebuilding it and living around us. Every human endeavour, potentially, needs to be changed if we want to change climate change. Mm -hmm. So I ask myself, how do you convince people to make that choice? Because most of us, we pick up a phone or a, anything we do, a glass of beer, and we don't know what the impact is. So I said, you've got to incentivise them. You've got to put money behind this thing. So I said, well, change comes two ways. One is internally, outwards, and the other is it gets imposed on us. Climate's going to impose change on us. So I said, well, it's got to come from within, so we put some money, some incentive behind it. And then I went down, 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 down. And you actually have to measure things at the minute level and then build it back up to put value behind that change, right? So we looked at a problem in industry, which is a $400 million industry in this country. 50% of products going into the construction industry are non-conforming in a number of industry sectors. Glass, aluminium, cladding, steel, etc. So we built this mechanism that allows you to demonstrate compliance to Australian code and measure the impact at a minute level, at a part level. Yeah? And then the consumer, principally the government, 25% of GDP, has a choice. They can either use our service or they can do that due diligence themselves. Yeah? So we put an easy mechanism for manufacturers to demonstrate compliance and the government pulls. Okay? So there's $2 million worth of waste in the industry at the minute. Defence wants it, manufacturers want it, and the customer, the clients want it. We all live in houses, we all work in buildings. So we've all got a vested interest. There's income from every step along the supply chain. Thank you. The mic doesn't turn off. Oh, does it doesn't. Oh. <laughs> Do you want any feedback? Anyone else?
So some feedback. feedback. I'll just give you one more piece of information. I'll give you one more piece of information is that we've got all the blocks in places. We're looking for builders. We're looking for marketers. We're looking for a team to make a reality. Cool. Yes, I want. Yeah. Feedback. feedback. Come on, guys. Um, my only feedback as a marketer is maybe you might want to do some pitches. <laughs> Less text. What was that? Less text. Yeah. Less text. More pitches. I mean, uh, that so that was the uh, byline and the call to action on there was very clear. Yeah, we need some yeah. hard-headed people here. Mm -hmm. yeah. The better website. Are there any website builders out there? <laughs> just, just a few. Just a few. Oh, there's no money in it. That's how we get it. Up. Okay. okay. Any other feedback? Yeah, I've got some feedback. Um, I think the question is a question that's really easy to engage people with. Yep. So that can be your first question, your first call to action, whatever it is. And yeah, I agree, it definitely should visually grab you. Uh, with your ask at the end, you haven't really addressed the WIFM, the what's in it for me, in terms of like, oh, we're looking for people to help us build this thing. We need everyone. We need marketers and construction people and website developers. But like, do you have funding? Uh, you know, is it? Are you looking to hire people? Are you looking for co-founders? Is there equity involved? Like, what if you're looking for meaningful engagement from your pitch? Then be clear about what the ask and what the offer is. Mm. Yeah. Very good. Thank you very much for that. Did you want to? Did you want to clarify any of that now? Yeah, we need all of that. <laughs> um, so, so what's in it for me? There's there's all sorts of opportunities. Once we we need, we need to build a pilot so that we can convince people who are less concerned perhaps with climate and more concerned with income, mm. that's the marketing drive. If it's a climate drive, it's a different different market. So we need to, we, we've got the blocks in place, we haven't got the technology, yeah. we've got the technology, the framework, but we need to build that. Yeah. Then we get funded. So it's a chicken and egg. Yeah. It's a standard chicken and egg. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, a, it's around e engagement through procurement. In a procurement yes. side of it, yeah. It's all. Yeah, good question. Let's go. Are you familiar with the blue economy? Yes. Yeah. Okay, good. Just wanted it's to make sure that. This actually leads into the circular economy. So the upcycling of yeah. materials and that's where it's going. Did you know that DFAT's doing an innovation challenge on the blue economy at the moment? No. Um, yeah, the last cycle finished about a month ago, though. Okay. Yeah, well, so I was thinking, I was looking at it the other day. Okay. Yeah. But I think there's another one coming up. So there's like one lot that just finished a little while ago, and then there's another one coming up. I've got other questions as well, like how does it work? But we can do that over a bit. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Thank you very much, Ted. Thank you. Thanks. Ted. Yep. Peter. What is it? Peter. Peter. Peter? Right. Where did I get Ted from? Because you do a big talk. Ah. Okay. Okay. I think that's all I have, unless someone else wants to give a pitch. Anyone else for you? Yeah. Come on! These are our Cox Howard friends. They can come up on the stage in Melbourne. Come on. We can't say you're an international speaker after being up here, but an interstate speaker. I can do that, but I was not prepared for it, so it's impromptu. I'd like to understand, is there anyone out here who is interested to move to a place where the surf is right in front of you, where the properties are right on the beach? which costs you $300,000, you can buy a house, and you have a startup community that is very passionate to support you. Is there anyone who would be interested to move to Coffs Harbour? Yep, I'll do that. And One, two, and we have the NBN. Oh, and we have the airport. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and direct flights to Melbourne. And is there a Silicon Beach community in Coffs Harbour? No. Not Just yet. started tonight. How is the coffee? A coffee is better than here. <laughs> Yeah, that's a big call. <laughs> there you go. You have to come to try it. Yeah. Okay. And, and we take uh, up the challenge. But seriously, we don't only have support from the local council, 
Christina is from local council, but we also have support from the state government, from the federal government, and from the local university, TAFE. So we're starting an accelerator, and we were looking at different options, including Founder Institute. And so we are very keen to engage with the Silicon Beach community and the startup community at large, not only in Australia, but worldwide. And Cox Harbour is the place to be. Awesome. I'll be there. Sounds great. As long as we got the free trips. We're going to get feedback. Yeah. Right, so it's really great to have people from all over Australia, and we've even had people overseas that were at the uh, talks and stuff today. It's been really good to get lots of people in from outside of Melbourne and be part of the startup community. So thank you very much. It's really good. Um, feedback, guys? Sure. I got really excited, and I wanted to know what next. How do I engage? So give me the, give me the next step. What's your background? Technology, <laughs> software. Software? Mm -hmm. So, have you got some startup ideas? Sure. Well, let's discuss. Okay. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so, is there a website, some some avenue that people can investigate yeah, further? Put it up on the meetup.com. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. yeah, right now there are some uh, sponsorship packages happening. So, we can Hang we help with relocation. And um, ideally, if you jump on the Coffs Harbour Council website, so no, there's. No. no? Six degrees. Here we go. Six degrees. We have a co we have a co-working space, and we've been running um, um, innovation challenges over the last two years. So there was our uh, product market or market fit test, and we believe we have enough um, pipeline of interest, and uh, we have local community who want to support us. We have some corporates who want to support our idea. So we believe we have enough. Um, you know, deal flow that many times a accelerator or incubator is challenged with, and we are the only one in Corsano. Yeah, and you were saying there was some incentive payments or resettlement stuff? Or... That's right, we help with the relocation, so there is a huge incentive to move to Corsano and to provide lifestyle as well as business opportunity. Awesome. Right, okay. So we have put this link on the Okay. So all the pictures, after all the pictures, yeah, yeah, after all the pictures and stuff, what we do is we grab all the websites and the contact information, and we put them up onto the meetup page for Melbourne Silicon Beach, and it's also sent out as a summary yeah. um, to everybody. Forget, uh, Colin is live streaming as well. This goes on live stream and yeah. goes on YouTube as well, uh, Silicon Beach TV, and he runs Silicon Beach Radio, so there as well. Yeah, Cullen can do voice and video. Yes. Yeah. Huh? I was just going to say, um, as somebody that you know used to run a co-working space, you should totally do pop-up co-locations and hackathons and invite people to visit and then mm. charm the pants off them before you ask them to move yeah. to Cos, Cos Harbour. But I think it's a great idea. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Great. Thank you very much. Did you invite the Silicon Beach Melbourne organisers to Cos Harbour? Yes. <laughs> it's, it's all just after free trips, everybody. <laughs> Okay, so next up, we do have one more. Right, yeah. Good. Thank you very much. Yeah. Sorry, I have to prepare, but anyway, hi. My name is Kadri, and my idea is train me anywhere. So pretty much, it is a discovery platform for PTs, coaches, and personal trainers to find new customers and also manage their business. Vice versa, it's a marketing platform or uh, marketplace for new customers find new trainings in their area, uh, precise on their location and prefer preferences. Uh, the idea I came about because I was traveling and I'm still traveling and I couldn't find trainers in my area or specific trainings I want to do. And when I came here and saw the fitness craze that is going around and I started talking with the PTs, I understood that the market is very scattered and upcoming PTs have a huge difficulty to get into the market or even finding just market for their new customers. So that was my idea and uh, I'm looking to see if anyone is doing in Melbourne or Australia that idea at the moment, even to collaborate with, or I'm preferring also technical co-founder as I'm business background and marketing background in startups. That was actually under a minute again. Well yeah. done. Good. All the pictures are good. Short and sweet. Do you want any feedback? Yeah, absolutely.
Yeah. Anyone have feedback for Seek your own fitness. You're perfect, um, perfect for feedback. Um, so I tell a lot of people that my ideal startup, if I had more time, would be like not necessarily a two-sided marketplace on, for trainers, but I travel a lot. By being able to access gyms on the fly with some sort of a global gym pass, that would be awesome. Uh, but there's a company called LastPass who's doing this for gym classes, so they've had quite a bit of traction, so I see no reason why this can't work. But it is a two-sided marketplace, which is five to ten times harder than building a one-sided um, marketplace, so that is challenging. So you've got to think about problem solution for the instructors or the trainers, problem solution for the gym goers, the buyers, um, and how do you effectively communicate that message to both parties. I mean, what's the business model look like? How are you going to make this compelling for everyone um, that is challenging when everyone charges different rates, etc., etc.? But on the surface, I think it's a great idea. Um, execution is 95% of the law. Um, so if you do carry this out, just be prepared for lots of ups and downs, but just stick with it. I think the idea itself is, is awesome. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah, you've got a great platform and a great platform idea, so you can extend that. It's hard to reach everyone. So if you reach organize or companies like Fitness First and you offer that marketplace to them so they have an ability to be able to take a click through when a personal trainer comes into their stable or when they get new clientele and you can take a piece of that action and that would be an easy market to get to and that would fund additional development. Thank you. Yeah, well done, that's good. We got any other feedback? <laughs> One here. Well, what you talked about actually exists already in Russia and they started moving into Nord Nordics. So it's definitely uh, something that people are looking for. Yeah. And it is, especially VPs, they moved into fitness as well and now they're also moving into martial arts as well. So it's all about the platform and what Steve said, two sided business model. They connected it. So it's definitely the idea that has been validated. And good luck. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. So when you come back in a year and you've got your $10 million funding round, we want to talk. <laughs> okay, and we have another one. Just while that's getting up there, um, we've also got a 360 degree camera over here. Do you want to come in and just show us? Um, John? John Walkinson. John Walkinson. Yeah, you probably saw me walking in front of everybody yeah. with this thing on the stick here. So I just thought we'd have a look while it's here. So it's got nothing to do with me other than I'm a big fan of 360 degree photography. Uh, it's a Ricoh Theta. It's a basically a little toy camera, which does uh, fairly good results. And uh, it's got a, a fisheye lens on the front and a fisheye lens on the back. Each lens can see a little bit behind itself. They both fire at the same time from your phone, which I'll turn my phone on right now here and connect to it. And it takes a panoramic shot. And I've been sending them over to Ian, and he's been posting them on Facebook, I believe, as we've been here tonight. Have you not? Yeah. Yes. So we will uh, shoot it on the yeah, way to Absolutely. Okay. Or just some links where they are. Yeah. 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 Yeah, so the really creepy thing is that uh, after we all leave tonight, people can go on, see our photos, and then walk around between us. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. You have signed uh, away your rights to your soul when you attend this yeah. coming up. Yeah. <laughs> Anything to do with startups or signing away your soul, you should know that by now. <laughs> yeah. the, next, the next step is we'll, we'll be to. Uh, forget about it for now. The ultimate, forget about it for now? It's active. Okay. The next step yeah, is the ultimate, the ultimate, the ultimate selfie. selfie. So you take a selfie and you've got everyone else around you. Yeah. And then you take them all. <laughs> <laughs> and have 50 people into one photo. Yeah, yeah. There's my well style yeah. picture. Uh, that sounds awesome. Yeah, so, so we'll link off to a few of these 360 photos from tonight as well. So you can um, show other people that you're in the 360 photos and experiential mindfulness. Yeah. Okay. Hello. So, who
Who here agrees that dealing with other people can be stressful? Yes. <laughs> yeah, I thought so. <laughs> so yes, we can all get um, frustrated or angry at times because people people don't do what we want yeah. or they don't think the way we do. Yeah. Or sometimes we find it really difficult to communicate, openly express uh, what we want and what we feel and that can lead to misunderstandings and conflicts. And when we have, whether we have our own business or we work for an organization, it's very important to be able to be effective communicators because that's obviously going to bring business and that's going to help us work well with others. Um, so I can help you. Um, I have my own business, uh, which is Experiential Mindfulness Melbourne, and I can teach you commit mindfulness techniques to help you become more effective communicator. So you can increase your productivity and improve your business relationships. And I've actually got a um, seminar next week on Wednesday, 7 September at 5.45 in St Kilda, which is about how communicating mindfully can help you and your business. So if you would like to find out how you can, some use, very useful tips and techniques to improve your communication to help you with your professional and personal relationships, please come and talk to me at the end. I'm Dr. Lise Sauger from Experiential Mindfulness Melbourne. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so we've got some, I've got to get some feedback. Guys? So it's a big market and it's a big topic and there's a lot of people with a lot of offerings. Great, great um, insight. You can get onto yourself, but what I would have liked to have heard was what are the testimonials, what are the results? People who come through this program have achieved what? Have found they have done what? So we really need some concrete results before we go invest money because otherwise we're just doing it on faith. So I would have liked to hear some testimonials. So this is just a workshop. This is just like you know, I'm doing. I can't say too many things in 90 seconds. So anyway, that's the workshop I'm doing next week. Uh, it's only $25. It's very cheap, and it's a lot of value. You'll hear, you'll get a lot of practical tips um, and techniques that you can apply in your professional and personal lives. So, I mean, I'm a massive advocate for mindfulness training, meditation. Um, I guess it's just try and be clear about who you're targeting. Is it all of Melbourne? Is it, you know, businesses in Caulfield? Um, the homepage, like the first picture we saw, lots of text, um, very wordy. The business name itself, like nine or ten syllables, um, very big. Uh, but I guess I'm looking at this from the perspective of a tech the tech world where we don't have much text on the page. Very clear call to action. I, all I saw was a phone number on the page. Um, not so much find out more, leave your email address so you can stop marketing to people, um, re retargeting people that way. Um, and there's, I guess it's a, how are you going to be different to everyone else that's out there. Um, one of the earlier ideas around the uh, personal trainer um, marketplace, the reason why she came up with that idea is because it's incredibly competitive, lots of different ways people are going about getting gigs, um, a lot of personal trainers stay in that space for a few months, maybe a couple of years, and then come out because it's just so competitive. Um, so having a unique value proposition, point of differentiation helps. A company that's done really well in this space, like incredibly well, will be Headspace, um, but that's like a global tech startup app. They're worth, I think, over a billion dollars now, and I'm sure that's probably not your, your goal. Um, if it is awesome, if it's not cool, maybe you just want to build a lifestyle business, and so that's great. I'm just rambling, so I'm just going to stop. <laughs> That was, that was that was that's that's very mindful. I love what you do. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, basically, from the feedback I got was that you should put some testimonials from people who have done the workshop on your website. Well, I've got that there. Oh, yeah, okay. It's a big website. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can start off. I'm pitching that my perfect small team is in this room. I have a brand spanking new co-working space in conjunction with the City of Monash with the federal, state and local government support. 
I'm pitching, and I'm so glad that this gorgeous lass in the front picture, I'm pitching for a small group of people to help me run a hackathon. I believe I've got the funds for it, I believe I've got the sponsors for it, and it's an intergenerational hackathon. So we're actually going to be having my generation, those SMEs that have got really great ideas but they don't have the tech skills, they're going to be pitching to your generation for the skills that they don't have. And building a tech piece, a product or a service on a premise that we believe that our sponsors are really keen to put forward. Now I want to do this in November and I don't have all the skills, I've never run a hackathon. I've got a board to please and a whole lot of stakeholders. Um, I'm going to need someone who knows a little bit about design thinking. I want someone that knows a little bit about how to run a hackathon. Um, and I'm looking for some people who know a few things about hackathons that I'm reasonably confident that I don't know about. I've got a team of people, I've got logistics, I've got the most incredible space to run it. And I'm just hoping that you're in this room and might tap me on the shoulder and we can yep. pull together Thanks. something. Can, can you help me? Thanks. Yeah, where is your, where's your space? Smack in the middle of Mulgrave. Does anybody know where Mulgrave is? I actually checked this out online last week or two weeks ago, I think, and, and looked at it and thought, that's actually almost doable from where I am. It is yeah. amazing. Yeah, we are happy to do that. We're a not-for-profit, so, uh, but I believe I've got... We are not for profit. We've got some. Um, I don't know to pitch that to you, but um, I believe we can pull this together by November. And I, but I need yeah. a bit of help. Yeah, so you can pitch us a not for income. Not <laughs> yeah, we, we just want income, not profit. Yeah. Okay, guys. Feedback. Feedback. Yeah, obviously there's um, probably a lot of people who can help you. A Taylor Tran, by the way. I Due to meet you at some point. Oh, yes, <laughs> we, um, Who wrote the innovation Melbourne? I know, you've got money yeah. in my car. <laughs> uh, the missing piece was what's in it for the people who are going to invest time in yeah. helping you. So that was probably the missing piece yeah. in the pitch. Yeah. Yeah. And there's loads of people who can help. And, and we can negotiate that, whether that's coming in where our funding's going, whether it's paid consultancy or whether it's um, part, you know, um, being able to connect you with the people that take you to the next level. Or it, for me, the value will come when I listen and we talk about what you need or what my person needs. Yeah. And we can connect you through this website. What's your name? Yeah, I'm Danielle. Danielle. Yeah. At... <laughs> I'm Danielle, you can get me a Danielle J story on pretty much any bit of social media uh, you can get me up through the website I, you can tap me on the shoulder um, you can find me almost anywhere but you can find me on the GovHack podcast that we did a couple of oh, weeks yeah. ago so oh, yeah. I'm there too oh, this same person, yeah. awesome, well done yeah, so anyone that doesn't know Colin does uh, the Melbourne Silicon Beach podcast and also the Eat Magazine podcast and I don't know, he's like doing everything at the moment, which is pretty cool and um, yeah so actually saw the unit well listen to the interview so great really really good Mean, means our co-work startup community everything like that's just getting better all the time so yeah awesome work okay so we we do have one more yeah thank you very much so one more because people are getting impatient they want to get back to networking so one last pitch okay quick one awesome Good evening, my name is Brad Fisher um, and two weeks ago I took the plunge and uh, departed my well-paid, secure corporate life to follow my startup dream and that is Last Mile Solutions. As an outcome, Last Mile Solutions will improve the livability within the central business district of many cities around, potentially around the world. Um, every day into Melbourne, 12,000 vehicles come into the central city to deliver freight. That creates problems for everyone in the supply train, from the receivers to the freight carriers to the city of Melbourne, who's trying to, to improve the, the or trying to improve the life of the people that reside in the central city. I believe I can commercialise it, and I believe I can make money out of it from the uh, freight carriers' perspective. So if you think about it, it we, did a, uh, we did a survey on a, on a high-rise building in Melbourne and we counted the number of freight vehicles that went in and delivered and there was 120 freight vehicles that went in there and delivered on this, on this one, day, one given day. 
The idea is that I'll set up a consolidation centre on the outskirts of the central business district. Freight carriers will bring in bulk to me. I'll then sort it and I'll then enter the central city using low impact delivery methods such as cargo bikes, freight trolleys, electric vehicles, whatever I want, but it won't be a gas guzzling van or truck. Thank you. Can you keep that? What's the ask? <laughs> Right now, right now, I am not asking for any financial assistance. I am purely asking for some. I'm purely asking for some tech assistance, and potentially a co-founder. I, I am solo founder currently, and I'm toying with the idea of going down a co-founder path. I've got some wonderful traction with New South Wales Transport. I've got some wonderful traction with the City of Melbourne. I've got all the assistance I need from the University of Melbourne. We're going okay. Cool. I love it. It's a really great idea. So are you going to be delivering to existing customers of existing freight companies? That is exactly right. So you're going to be part of the supply chain? I'm going to partner the freight carrier. Partner the freight carrier. So I'm just going to offer them the service. Offer them, And, and it's a very cost-constrained uh, business. There's a lot of profit margin. As yeah. it currently is, the, the freight carriers delivering into the central city can't can't make money today. No. They can't. Right. But I know I can. You can? So when you're looking for a co-founder and you say you want technology, is your background operational excellence? 100%. Okay. 100%. I'm happy. Because yeah. that would be my advice. Yeah. The other thing at Salesforce we've learned over the years of working with startups is when there's only one or two founders, mm -hmm. they often fail. Yeah. Three founders or three core people, we usually have winners. Someone for operational efficiency, someone technical capability, and someone on the marketing or business side. Yep. So that's my advice. So I go, I go to trial in October. Uh, City of Melbourne have given me space. I've got the freight, I go to trial, I prove the model, and then I'll go down the path. Okay. Um, thanks yeah, I think we had a really good pitch night tonight. Thanks to the Foundry Institute people, especially because we don't have feedback on the pictures. We just put the pictures up there and sort of go away. It's over in half an hour, so today it took nearly one hour, but it's it's really worth it. So thank you so much for coming. Thank you, James and Ian, for bringing your Foundry Institute people here. It's really good. Do you want to say something? Yes, I, I, just a very quick one. If you were interested in the fellowship, then can you um, just Dr. share Mike. your... Because it goes on the... <laughs> if you were interested in the fellowship, then please could you share your details with either myself or Ian? Um, we have a back office team that we need to please, and if we don't give email addresses, then you're not in the system, it becomes very complicated. So if you were interested, please do share your details for that. Yeah, we we'll put that we we'll put that link to the form in the meetup page as well. So the new meetup page goes up for the October meetup. So I'll put all the links there. We we'll go up tomorrow or on Saturday. And uh, yeah, look forward to that. You can connect with all the people who pitched. And we are looking for volunteers as well. Silicon Beach, like if it was only me, it would have it would have been finished by now, but thanks to these guys and the others who helped. So you can just connect, contact us, contact the organizers and say, I'm happy to, you know, spend two or three hours a week or something like that. And we're looking for people of all types to help us. Yeah, and, and thank you very much to Athula who's um, sort of stuck with Melbourne Silicon Beach and helped build it up over a long period of time. Same with Colin as well for doing our video and he's been with Athula for like two, three years. Yes. Okay. It's a marriage in hell. Yeah, yeah. So thank you very much for those guys for the long term stuff. Yeah, apparently, yeah, it wasn't. You didn't get divorced because of that. <laughs> okay, and let's do a 360 image as well. I'll take a group photo if everybody yeah. wants to get on 360 here. 360 group photo. A huge crowd of people all around. Come, come on up here. Come on, come forward, everyone. Everybody, and we'll all stare up and look at the damn thing. We'll get a big group photo, and then we'll uh, post it somewhere. Yeah, that's cool. It is tight. Come on, everybody, move here. Yeah. Nice and tight. This is. We'll, we'll see how many people we can tag. Yeah. Can, can you do this? Can you put it on Facebook and tag the video, yeah. or tag yeah. the tag the still? Yeah. Tag the still. Yeah. yeah. We'll see if we can get like you know a hundred people tagged or something on the one image. Everybody's putting me in the middle here. I'll put you in the middle. There you go. <laughs> okay. Everybody, stare up in the sky. And one, two, 
Two. I just need to go with some right now. Cheese. 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 There we go. It's done. Awesome. I'll play some link up. And in literally 15 seconds, I can show it to you on the phone. Really? You would not need the And of course, thank you to our sponsor, TCF. Thank you to Royal Melbourne Hotel. And everyone else who's here. Very big thank you to the Founder Institute. Hopefully we can do more things with you. And thank you for coming along. You're awesome. Thanks, guys. Woohoo! Thank you, Dr. Socializing. Thank you very much for taking us out. And thank you, Colin, for taking the video. This, this is Colin, yeah, the fan yeah, behind the I camera. This. I love this thing. Hey, thank you, everybody. See you next month. Yeah, next time. Woo!